All right, bismillah walhamdulillah. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafkahu qawli amin ya Rabbi. Today, I want to talk about spirituality. And you're really uh, well-read on the subject. You're a master on the subject of spirituality. Um, if anybody is, really, you know. <laughs> Allah is the master of spirituality. And, and we're all beginners. And, uh, and I'm at your feet. But as a student, I'm going to start off kind of like on this um, uh, with a few concepts that I think that Muslim, especially young Muslims or younger Muslims, that they struggle with. And because, you know, there's so many distractions and so much, it's so hard to be good. And, uh, and then uh, because it's so hard to be good, we a lot of times lose hope or uh, we stop struggling for idealism and settle for a type of nominalism level of being a Muslim. Yeah. So that's what I really want to talk about today is that uh, what is what does spirituality really mean? And so, meaning, what is that experience? So there's a few things that happen. Uh, the first one is we live in this modern world and we find uh, some of the acts or behaviors of the people of the past maybe a little bit awkward or insensible to modern times. So that's one aspect. Then the second one is the one I want to mention is the one you mentioned, which is the versus the here versus now. I think that needs to be resolved too. So what are your thoughts about, you know, uh, spirituality and modernity? Oh, well, both through um, the very imperfect renunciation of the dunya that the hippies were trying to do, and they didn't succeed very well, but there was that tendency was to say, you know, the world is, 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 you know, against spirituality, so we have to separate ourselves from the world, and we, which didn't last very long, uh, and Certainly what the hippies did, you know, became bought up by the world and became a big part of the world. So now everybody's slightly bohemian in Western society, uh, which means whatever was good in bohemianism in the sense of, of a separate counterculture, which was against, you know, the, the, the power plays and, and, and the love of money and all and the greed in the world, that, that's gone, you know. But at least um, we said... There's got to be something more than this, you know, looking at, at, at the disasters of the world, which are so obvious now and was, have been all most of my life obvious. Hmm. And so, you know, um, that's one thing. And then, but, the, but then how, how does one really, and because it's not just saying no to the modern world. That's what the, the traditionalists and the perennialists concentrate upon. They, they say they're against the modern world. Well, that's that's definitely something to be against because th there are errors and illusions that have grown up in our times, which have a long history going back to God knows when, you know, um, but th th they've really come to flower like a black rose in times like these. Um, terrible terrible ideas, terrible attitudes, terrible illusions, terrible obsessions and, 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 and drives and, and, and craziness that leads to violence, and leads to violence against oneself and leads to despair. I mean, the modern world is in bad shape, no question about that, because we're on the eve of, of Dajjal. Mm. But what, what, what we really have to break with at every time is the world, not just the modern world. I mean, people in earlier times also had to break with the world mm. you know? i mean i mean let's let's say what when islam was just beginning there was a world there that was inimical to everything the prophet was preaching and and that that, that his companions were striving to 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 actualize and live with it was it was the world of of uh, the Quraysh, who who you know and and the kaaba had become a pagan temple in, in, in order to appeal to pilgrims and merchants 
uh, from from many parts of the world who were converging, you know, through the trade routes on Mecca, and you know this was all being exploited um, economically, and and religion as it always tends to become was a business, a money making operation, and uh, the idea of overcoming the corruption that was affecting the human soul, you know, really took a back seat. I mean, uh, my colleague, Dr. Morrow, was um, in some of the things he wrote, would just, just talk about the, um, the sexual degeneracy of that time, you know, of, you know, um, you know, women who would, 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 would appear naked in public, you know, and, and, and brag about how, 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 they were uh, committing adultery and their husbands were, you know, putting their husbands down. It was just, I mean, just like part of what's going on now. I mean, that's part of what's going on now. The, the other part is a reaction against, against sexuality itself, against, um, you know, we, we, we have, we have a, a Puritanism, a, a, a new Puritanism now, but it isn't even a Puritanism based upon religion. Like the old Christian Puritanism was, it's a horrible scient scientific Puritanism that mm. denies that there is even such a thing as gender. Mm. So this is pretty dark times. But anyway, there's always a world that you have to say, um, if I'm going to get close closer to Allah, I can't be part of it. And so, what is the world? What is the dunya? The dunya, well, okay. In Sufism, we have a concept of the nafs, which means the soul or the self, and um, the nafs is everything you think you are. <laughs> it's not really who you really are, but it's everything you think you are. <laughs> Interesting. And, and everything you think you are is, is immediately projected on the world, and, and, and so you have this complex of nafs and dunya. You know, the, the outer aspect of the nafs is the dunya, you know, everything you think the world is, everything you think that is happening, that should, that should happen, that's going to happen, that has happened. Mm -hmm. All of that, you know, is a, is a, is a, a projection. <coughs> you are. So, and for example, me, my nafs identifies myself as, okay, I'm a student of knowledge, or I'm a scholar, or something like this. That's just my own projection of myself. That's not reality of me. Well, it's and That's you just know, a label. There, there are better, better and worse identifications. You have to say, you know, and and so you 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 can't say that's entirely untrue. But you have to say if that's what you're concentrating your attention on, I am I am the scholar, I am I am the sheikh, I am the imam. That's me. Then you've got an idol there, you know. We all we all have that idol, and 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 that's the first idol that has to be overthrown. That that that's the idol that occupies the heart. So that the ruh, so the spirit of Allah, cannot fully enter the heart, and and that that idol always projects itself in the world. And you say, and 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 it, you know, it, it can even make some 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 valid judgments about what's good, what's evil, you know. Uh, uh, but it's got an inherent limitation because the, the idea of the nafs, the nafs always believes, probably unconsciously that it has created itself. We say we've created ourselves. We act like we are our own creators, which is ridiculous, mm. but that's the way we act. Mm. We do not understand that Allah not only has created us, but continues to create us. And that each breath we take, it's as if he's breathing out while we're breathing in his breath. And then when we breathe out, we, we surrender our soul back to Allah in every breath. Mm. And and we're just you know that, uh, we 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 exist only only by his attention and by his love, um, and 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 uh, we, we only as mirrors of him. Mm. Whereas if we turn away from that knowledge, which almost all of us have done, and even those who know that that isn't the, the real state of affairs, ninety nine percent of the time think. Well, I'm I'm me now. I, I have to do something now. This is you know I have a, I have a duty. I'm supposed to do this. Next, I'm going to do that. Here's my plan for doing this. Well, that has to go on. Otherwise, you can't function in life. But if that becomes the dominant theme, you forget that 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 all as it says in the Quran, you know, Allah has not just created you; He's also created your actions. 
Mm. You know, and that's a mysterious thing because you have absolute responsibility for your actions, mm. and yet Allah has created them. You know, and 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 this is one of those those places where, where people can really get hung up. You you can say, you know, some people say, well. Uh, Allah has, has created all my actions and he's the only doer, he's the only one acting, you know, and so uh, what can I do? You know, if, if, I, if I'm going to be bad, I guess he wanted me to be bad, okay? You know, and, and don't go there. <laughs> you know, if, if why would the Quran have all these exhortations and, 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 you know, warnings against doing this and exhortations to do good and if, if there was no free will? There is free will. But what's strange is that the, the freedom of the will is, is Allah's freedom. It's not ours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, the, you know, you just say something like that, and that becomes a mystery that, that people just, <laughs> you know, have to, have to live with because it, it, it is strange. But no question, we have to meet the mark. And yet, you know, everything we do is, is, is by Allah's will. And that's just the way it is. And if you it, if, if you can't figure that out, that shows you that the time has to come when you have to st stop trying to figure things out, you know, and, and, and take a step deeper into the spiritual life, into the mystery of, of, of you know, th that we are creatures of Allah, you know, and, and, and always have been and always will be. But the nafs thinks it's, it's created itself. <laughs> so, um, you know, it has all these, uh, there's, there's a, a poem forget the name of the poet, but it's got famous lines. Uh, it's called in, Invictus, which means unconquered in Latin, Invictus. And the lines, you know, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Mm -hmm. You know, well, no, Allah is the master of your fate. Allah is the captain of your soul. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's... that's <laughs> Allah is like in between the man and his heart, right? He is between the, the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, right. And he turns it how, however he will. And, and uh, yeah, he's going to keep turning it. And, and, and it's to recognize yeah. every way he turns it is another act of his. We, we have these ideas. Um, okay, maybe we didn't create ourselves, but we're by God going to save ourselves. There are certain states, certain ways we want to be, we want to be like. Now, you have to have an ideal. You have to say, I, I, I want to be vigilant. I, I want to, to remember Allah. I, I, I want, you know, to, 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 to be, you know, trustworthy. And, 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 and I want to be a loving person. I want to be an intelligent person. You know, I, I, I want to be courageous, you know, when I have to be. I want, I want these virtues. I want to be like that. But... And, and so you, you can't do without that kind of aspiration. And yet your state changes and Allah is turning your heart between his two fingers all the time. Mm -hmm. And to recognize that each turn that happens, some of them may, may, may make you look not very good to yourself. You're saying, oh, I thought I was better than that. Well, yeah, but now you're here with that. What does it mean that you're saying, I wish I was better than that? What good can come out of that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of good can come out of that. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. so, sometimes sometimes there's gra gratitude for God's gifts. Sometimes th there's compunction and, re and repentance, and it's all good if you understand it's all coming from Allah. Every turn of the heart. You know? yeah. So, 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 uh, so in terms of uh, the modern sensibilities, you know, people will. Uh, identify islam with let's say certain externalities let's say my beard my cap my dress we've been told like like i'm talking about my mashaykh you know they said you always have to be in uniform uh, in yeah. a sense that you always have to externalize to remind almost to remind yourself that you have to act a certain way yeah I mean, but then you have also good. the phenomenon where it's the opposite people wear the 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 externalities but then don't care about the internal at all yeah, they, they they become their their dress you know they, they forget that there's a heart you know beneath beneath the the, the uh jalaba and and also beneath you know the physical body you know there's a spiritual core well that that that's one of the the the, the constant paradoxes you know you you um 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, ideally, you know, if 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 you're addressed in a sacred manner, you you, you will be more naturally ashamed to to do anything that, that that violates that, you know, that dress of yours. You know, um, on the other hand, you could say, you know, I'm I'm you can make an idol out of yourself and say, here I am, you know, having reached you know, this degree of perfection, and I, I've got recognition in the community, and da, 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 and all of that, but that can lead you to hell. So that's, there's always a paradox like that. And one of the paradoxes is, uh, we were talking about earlier, um, well, in the Sufism, you say, you know, the goal, if there is a goal, is, is fana, is uh, annihilation. I don't think, you know, and after that, it is said, you know, that's annihilation in Allah, and then after that comes baka, which is subsistence within Allah. But that even can't that can't even be a goal, you know, because you, if you say I'd like to subsist in Allah, then the next thing you're going to say is, and, and maybe I could just jump to that and forget the annihilation part, you know. So all you can really aspire to is is annihilation, and. Annihilation means the death of everything you think you are, the death of your habit, your obsession to continuously define yourself and to define the world. Mm -hmm. I am this, I am that, the world is this, the world is that, you know, as if it's up to you to make those judgments. That has to die. That has to die. And so you think, well, and pe people think about what that is. Oh, well, you know, everything I know myself to be will die. That's kind of awful. I won't be anything. I'll be a shapeless blob. I'll be an, uh, I'll be a, a horrible, lonely void of nothing. And, 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 you know, oh, you know, isn't that what we're trying to overcome? This awful alienation and loneliness. You know, I don't want to be that. That's what thought tells you. And thought is an idiot half the time. Uh, because mysteriously, when, when you're, obsession to define who you are and to define what the world is is annihilated what happens you become only who allah knows you to be mm -hmm. and has made you to be and that's who you really are and who you always have been. Mm -hmm. and so and 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 then looking through the eyes of of who you always have been in the sight of allah you see the world as it is you see things as they are as the prophet said you know, pray to Allah, show me things as they really are. Well, if if you if you know, you know, if you know yourself, you know Allah. And if you know yourself, you can see things as they really are. Mm. But th that that self is not something you have created. It's something Allah continues to create and continues to give you, uh, you know, every every moment. So uh, you know, if 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 you are what about you, somebody uh like we've been taught uh in our tradition that you know part of it is always thinking okay what what did the prophet do like how did he yeah. enter the rooms and how did he go up the stairs how did he come not up the stairs but going on an oh, elevation yeah. or coming down it so you kind of like replacing your identi identity with the identity of the prophet well, I mean, that's that, that's something that I have never done systematically, but, you know, I, that, that, that's a true way. I mean, what, what is what is the prophet Sunnah if, if, if you can't take his every action and, and his every every story about him, everything he ever said as a model for. Him. But, you know, if, if, if you if you all, always enter the room, you know, with with your right foot first, well, you, you can you can just say, well, I'm a, that's good. You know, the more the more I do this, let's say I got to remember to step with my right foot and brush my teeth like this, do that, and, and, and I, I must be getting better because I'm doing all these things. What matters is, is the meaning of these things. If mm. the, you know, the, the meaning of the sunnah uh, is the life of the sunnah. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's just, you know, mechanical behavior and mechanical behavior can e leads either to depression and despair because why am I doing this stuff anyway? Or it leads to pride. You say, you know, look, I mean, you know, in, in, in the past, you know, hour, I, I, I have imitated the prophet in these various ways. I'm doing very well. You know, all of that is, is barren. You know, what does it mean to take the first step in, into a room with the right foot? It means, 
well, what's the right and what's the left? You know, I mean, in, in a certain way of saying, you know, the, 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 the right is, is, you know, it's, it's the, the, the direction of, of, of those who in the Akira, you know, are, are headed for paradise. You're taking a step toward paradise. If you take a step with the left foot, that's taking a step in the direction of the nafs, you know? It's, it's, it's like that, that's, that's thinking, that's acting through, let's say that's acting through self-will, you know? I'm by God gonna enter this room because, you know, it's my decision and I'm, you know, you know? And, and if you enter with that attitude, uh, the next thing that happens in that room will, will not be particularly positive. Whereas mm -hmm. if you say, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this step in, in the will of Allah. And, and, and if I unite myself with that will, every step I take is a step, you know, toward, you know, jhana. And, and uh, if you can really make that alive for you, then, then the sunna is a wonderful thing. You know, how, look at the, all the different ways you, you, you can remember Allah and you can remember what a human being is and what is required of a human being in all these different actions of daily life. That's a wonderful thing. But if you don't see the meaning, you know, it, it, it could become negative. So. Mm. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is that when we read about the past, uh, about the prophet, peace be upon him, about his companions, about the great scholars after that, the revivers of Islam, uh, we get a feeling of like a very high level of idealism, you know, and we'll read about even maybe the miracles that they did and how close they were to Allah and how many Qurans they finished oh. every day. And, and just uh, like where it, it is impossible uh, from the perspective of where we stand to, you know, to read that much Quran and do that much adhkar and do that much uh, good deeds uh, that they were doing. Yeah. So what is somebody in the modern times? Now, I'm going to give an answer to that. And then I want you to give your reflections is that after the baseline, which is the Sharia, so that's like the baseline, that if you can even get, you know, if you can get some distance in one of the good attributes or one of the good states uh, with a sincere heart, so whether it is thankfulness or whether it's giving charity, whether it is, you know, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, if you can you know, even if you're not doing so good in other aspects, but if you can excel in, and this is what's so interesting, right? The Prophet says, uh, people can enter Jannah through different good deeds. So it's yeah. like everyone will have their way to enter Jannah. And so any reflections on that? Yeah, I mean, there's Sufi stories like, you know, someone you know, led a life, you know, this is one of those sort of excessive stories, but, you know, it's, it's to illustrate a point, you know, someone who may be a prostitute had, had lived a life of sin, and yet there was a moment when there was a hungry cat who, who was crying for food. She fed the cat. Because of that, she enters Jonah, you know, mm -hmm. which is, it's first to show... By the way, that's a narration in Sahih Bukhari. It's an authentic narration of the Prophet. Ah, so, so, so you have... Uh, and um, you know, you see the immense power of mercy, you know, and and you know, she didn't feed the cat out of lust or greed; she fed the cat out of love mm -hmm. and of compassion. And you know, particularly in a life like she had led, maybe she, her heart would have been so hard she could never have cared. You know, this, how much is this cat going to pay me? You know, <laughs> pay pay me my fee, and I'll feed you. You know, but. No, she, you know, so, um, yeah, and, and in our times, what, what is the hadith that said, you know, in, in, in the times of the prophet, and, and anyone who neglects a tenth of the sharia will, will go to the fire, but in the latter days, anyone who keeps a tenth of the sharia will go to paradise, mm -hmm. and that's just because it is so hard. Everything is against it. You're not, we're not in Dar al-Islam, in Dar al-Islam, what's left of it itself is not in the greatest shape. People blow up Sufi shrines in Pakistan, and you know, it's not particularly 
you know, none of the religions are in great shape socially, culturally at this point. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you think, well, I mean, I, I, I read the Sufis of Andalusia by uh, Ibn al-Arabi and, oh, I mean, miracles and, 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 and incredible acts of, of, of asceticism and devotion and, and revelations. And, you know, he's, he, he's, you know, sailing on a ship and he sees, you know, um, you know, kids are walking across him on the water to, to him on the water and, and, and gives him an, an initiation. And, you know, I'm sure all this stuff happened. You think, you know, how can we ever have that? You know, I mean, I mean, and people who want that kind of stuff end up sometimes going for, for what the jinn can give them because it's it's a it's a kind of counterfeit of, of, of a higher thing, you know, and, and it's it's awful easy to 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 connect with uh with those darker forces you know particularly if, if they can you know produce some especially when they come in the form of something good yeah yeah which, so, so you know but, but, i know of know, cases like that actually where uh, yeah very, I know of cases hard like to that. avoid that stuff you know yeah. but but you know um well we're, we're living in times where everybody has to be a fuck here you know we are poor that's our, that's that's our our richness in these times. We are poor. We are wretched. We don't. We're not living in the great ages of Islam, where, where miracles abounded and and there were magnificent philosophers on every street corner or whatever it was. You know, mm. we're living in very dark and very sad times, and 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 we are we are wretched and, and destitute, and that is our strength and that's our riches because. We could really turn to Allah. I mean, you know, you could say all all, all this wonderful, miraculous uh, occurrences and, and philosophies and, and all these, you know, uh, we're too poor for that. But so all we can do is turn to turn to, to the one from whom all that came, not trying to, to get those riches back, but in our poverty turn you know to to who Allah Allah who is the source of all riches, and we can do that better now if we understand what we're up against than perhaps we could have done in earlier times so. it's interesting because Sut al kahf which of course is the surah that deals with uh the age of dajjal or the postmodern world i mean the the whole theme of this surah is to break from dunya the whole theme of this whole surah is you know uh, is uh, is that uh, do away with dunya, right? Zinatul uh, hayat dunya. Like one of the main verses uh, given to the Prophet, peace be upon him, wasbir nafsaka, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, have sabr ma'al ladina yaduuna rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashiyi yuridu nawajha. Those you know that uh, have sabr with those that call upon their Lord in the morning and the evenings, seeking His face. And wala ta'du aynaka anhum, and don't turn your eyes away from from them. Turidu zinat al hayat al dunya. Don't uh, turn your eyes towards the people that desire the dunya. Wala tuti'man al falna qalbahu an dikrina. And don't go after the one whose heart is uh, covered from our remembrance. What tabi' what what tabi' hawahu fa wa kan amru fulta. And who turns away from our remembrance and his affair is uh, fruitless. So, um, I mean, this is one of the main themes. And then it'll say uh, again, like Al Malu al Baluna, Zinatul Hayat al Dunya, uh, that, you know, right here, wealth and children are adornments of the present life. Even in the beginning of the surah, it'll, it's the very beginning is. You know, to deliver good news to the believers who do righteous deeds, and then it'll say uh, over here um, uh, to test which of them does is best in conduct. Um, this whole surah is about kind of like uh, disassociating yourself from dunya. Even the stories, you know, the Musa and Khidr stories in here, the uh, the man who is the land. And he thinks it'll stay with him forever and it gets destroyed, isn't here. The seven sleepers. So it's all anti-materialism. Yeah, the seven sleepers. Um, I personally believe it's the nine sleepers. But that's a whole <laughs> other story. I could say <laughs> it's called the seven sleepers because there was a, 
a, a famous story that the Christians picked up. It may have been from the Greeks. I don't remember. But but the Greek, you know, the Christians have the seven sleepers. There's even a, an Eastern Orthodox icon of the seven sleepers. Yeah. And so it's you'd commonly identify. Oh, that must be the seven sleepers. I don't know. I think it was the nine sleepers. But anyway. It's another story. Um, yeah, and, and so, you know, uh, you know, whenever when, when everything is disaster in the world outside, you know, I mean, just, you know, retirement to retire. What, what, what is sleeping? You know, they're sleeping in the cave and the sun passes back and forth between, you know, the mouth of the cave and their heads turn as the sun turns. What an image, you know, but it's all happening in their sleep. It's like in a certain sense, it's very hard to wake up to the world in this world because it's so terrible. We don't want to look at it, you know? So so maybe, and, and of course, people want to flee from reality and that's a terrible thing. But if if that desire for flight means that you flee unto Allah, that's a wonderful thing. So, you know, the, the, the feeling that you just need to withdraw from all of this because it's too much, if that's possible for you, mm. you know, can itself be, be, be a, a spiritually very fruitful? You know? And who's that little dog who's, who's, who is guarding them while they sleep? You know, mm. you know I mean, the dog is, is a common Sufi symbol of the nafs, which is what does that mean? You know, mm. also that the dog, you know, is there with paws outstretched and r r almost reminds you of, of a sphinx. Mm. So those are those are interesting mysteries. Yeah. And so, OK, so we have the the minimum obligations and then we have so many doors. And I think I mean, what would you say? Would you agree or would you that? in today's world an average teenager who's struggling right and and he he can't meet that can't meet the standards of that romanticism or that idealism yeah. that once existed that if he's excelling in something that he should thank a lot in these these times and day days and age right yeah I, I think that's a wonderful thing because I mean, if, if you're serious about the spiritual life, th th then the time will come where you're, you will look at yourself and so you say, I am a hopeless case. Why do I even try? You know, look, this is the mark. You see the mark and you say, I can never meet that mark. You know, and, and, uh, and th th this is when Shaitan comes and says, well, don't worry, because I've got another mark and it will be very easy for you to meet that one. Mm. Come along. And well, too many people do that. Mm. So, uh, but, you know, yeah, to, just to say what, what is, it's like, what, what is really you? What do you really love? What, what is the kind of thing that, that I mean, I once asked uh, one of my Sufi advisors in, in the Namatullahis, um, the head of the whole order is called the peer and, and, and the sheikh, there's, there's a sheikh at each Hanukkah, you know, each, each mm. Sufi house. And uh, so I asked the sheikh of Hanukkah once, how do you know what, What's God's will for you? He says, well, it's, it's the thing that just keeps happening over and over again by itself, or the thing that you would obviously do, you know, in any circumstance, you know, that, that's, that's you, that's what you would do. And this is what always happens. Now, that could be very negative, because that, that, that can be habitual sin, or it can be terrible fate that, 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 that keeps hurting you in the same place over and over again. But behind that, is something that you really are in, in, and, and that God has made you to be. And, and you can see beyond those veils to, you know, well, well what, is my, what is my basic tendency before good or evil? Just what kind of, a, what kind of an animal am I? You know, what, what, you know am, am I a squirrel? Am I a fox? <laughs> what am I? You mm. know, and, and what, what does that kind of person do? And if you can get to that sense of yourself, then you will begin to see God's will for you. And he'll show you exactly how that thing that's peculiar to you uh, is your very way of, of relating to him. And, and, and that, that the Islamic tradition can show, if, if you can find it in that tradition, exactly how that 
aspect of things can uh, <coughs> be a road to paradox, you know, um, because we're we're all we're all made on, on a different set of the names of God. You know, why why is there more than one of us? <laughs> Mm. Why? Why are there more than one human being? Wouldn't God just ha have to make Adam and say, hey, in, "In Adam, Adam knows all, I taught him all the names. In him are all the names of heaven, heaven and earth, and the names of the angels." So, and he's he is my manifestation on earth. Why, why does he have to have children? Why do we have to be, be more people? Because, mm. you know, um, God wants Allah wants His own uniqueness to be spread throughout the universe. He wants each person to be unique and to be a, a, a mirror of his own uniqueness, who is the unique. This is, there's nothing like Allah. There's nothing to which he can be compared. And in, in a smaller way, that's kind of true of everything. There's nothing to which anything can be compared. Everything is perfectly itself, you know? And if you can find that, but the thing is your idea of who you are perfectly yourself, well, I'm, I'm this kind of person, this is my trip, and this is what I do, that all can get eaten up by the nafs, and it becomes a horrible idol, so you have to die to that sense, <laughs> and, and say, God, you show me who I am, you show me what you want from me, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, and be, within the context of the sharia, of, of doing your best to do the basic practices, then the prayer is, um, you know, Allah, who do you who have you made me to be? Show me who you've made me to be. Show me what you want for me that that, that couldn't couldn't be given to you or by anybody else on earth. You know, show me what what you know. Not because I'm special, just because you know I, I, I've got to be authentic. You know, I, I can't just be a, a reproduction of some some outer form. I've got to be my authentic self, and that authentic self, you know, can be a perfect jewel in the setting of the sacred form of the sharia in the islamic tradition you know i mean it, it it's so this is a mysterious thing you know uh and so sharia is one aspect right so we, it's yeah. it's the harder aspect in a sense that it's obedience and surrendering yeah and the other side of this is love and Love is obedience and surrender. That's the, you have that's, to surrender to love. You know, if you don't surrender to love, it's not love. Love, right, love, right, right. Do, okay. dominates you. Love, love is is power, and 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 you have no power to stand against it unless you want to destroy yourself. Mm. What would you say about the importance of love of Allah and love of the Prophet and love of Islam? Even if a person's falling short, you know, and, and here's where where the the metaphor of romance comes to me. You know, it's like there may be a beautiful human being you want to get next to, and you feel that you're just not. How can I ever really be attractive or 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 appreciated by this person? Because there's they are the, the ideal. They're my ideal, and I am. Look at me, you know. I'm hopeless. I, I'm in. I'm in rags. I can't. How can I appear before this this beautiful being, you know? But but then, you know, you you have to feel that. But then 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 you, you know you feel, you know, that that there is a love that's coming to you from that beautiful being. You you will love Allah. You can only love Allah if you recognize this. Recognize that He loves you. You know, you, you can only love the prophet if you see that he was truly a mercy to all the worlds. Mm. And, and but, but, but on the other hand, that love does not get all the way to you because you're still disordered. You have to grow in that love, you know, like, like a flower grows in the sun, you know, toward, toward that source of light until mm. finally you can open your face and, 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 and be a sun of your own, like a sunflower that, that, that faces, you know, the, the, the sun of truth. So, so, so there, there, you're, you're not, you're not ready, yet, but you're not rejected either. You know, you, 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 you're, the, your very feeling of your unreadiness is a mercy because Allah is saying, all right, you, you want to get closer to me? Here's, here's what needs to be done. Look, 
this needs to be set right. This needs to be balanced. This needs to be let go of. And, and you know, so, so come, you know, keep, keep walking, keep moving toward me because I'm drawing you, you know, because the love always, always begins with Allah. You know, and it's, it's say, it says in the Quran, uh, um, remember me and I will remember you, which is true. Hmm. But also it says, it's I who have sent down the remembrance, which means the Quran in one sense, but it also means, you know, if you remember me, it's, it's only because I've remembered you first. You know, how could I not remember you? You know, I'm, 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 you know, I, I, I know, and, and I'm, the, I'm the witness over all things. You know, and all things are present to me at this moment. Of course, I remember. You just forgot that I remembered you, so you have to remember. But it starts with me. Everything starts with Allah. So, uh, a lot of people in 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 the times, the young folks especially, have some very. Uh, embarrassing habits like pornography for example and uh what we've been taught and i want your uh advice on that uh, for the and for the listeners is that to always tell people that okay so there's the habits of the nafs versus mm -hmm. the you can say the sins of the heart so things like showing off uh things like holding a grudge mm -hmm. things like uh uh being arrogant uh things uh like uh slandering people looking down upon people uh these are of a, of a higher uh, uh evil than a trap enough is caught in so let's say you know a lot of young kids come to me and they talk about i'm stuck in pornography i can't get out of it or they do weed or they do vaping nowadays yeah. um and and you know they want to get out of it but it's not that easy and that's their crutch in their in their life or whatever they're going through uh or in the in the pre-modern times let's say somebody was drinking a lot but you could still have a pure heart even though your your nuts is stuck in a habit and but you don't have let's say arrogance compared to somebody who has arrogance yeah, yeah. but is drinking yeah that's interesting you know one of the things i've just been writing about in my autobiography is uh the stories of the the beat generation poets who i knew a bunch of them you know mm -hmm. and the beat generation was like that they they you know I'm, I'm not saying they never got arrogant and that's you know and, and had had those but 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 they, they were sort of to begin with at least losers as far as the dunya was concerned and so and so they had you know J jack kerouac became a bad alcoholic and you know and my own teacher as a as a poet was an alcoholic suicide lou welch and you know and they, they devastated devastating things happened to them but there was a sort of sense that you know, the, 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 they recognized their own poverty, and 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 they said maybe, you know, uh, you know, that 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 we've had to live such degraded lives. At least this prevents us from being arrogant, and at least we we, we can mm. we can use this very, you know, destructive and painful situation. But somehow, if, if we believe in God, we can open our hearts through this. And now, now that's not something anybody should do, obviously. That's that's because it's it's you know, you see what happened to a lot of those guys. But they did have that attitude that that that, that you know purity of heart was was greater than than you know purity of habits. You know, they did see that. I mean, J Jack Kerouac has this line, you know, he 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 had prayed. You know, to, to to God to get to get his first book, book published, which was the town and the city, and he prayed when it, when when it, it, it was finally published. Then he wrote this 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 you know prayer, if you will, of, of, of thanksgiving to God for for you know, letting him get his book published. And he has this great line in which he says, uh, "God is the only critic who cares little for style." Which is a beautiful line, you know. Hmm. But those guys, you know, I mean, uh, and 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 enough of them went in truly dark directions, not 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 just unfortunate directions, but 
So I, so I, I know what, I know what you mean. But the thing is, look, we all want to say, I don't want to come before. You know, I, I mean, you, you, you've been summoned to the court of the king, and you say, well, how? Can, I don't even have a decent suit of clothes. Look at me. I look, let me take a bath at least, you know, or something before, before, you know, I look like Steve Bannon for God's sake. How can I go to the, <laughs> to the court of the king? You know, and 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 you're, you're ashamed. And and but but the summons comes. You have to come now. Even in this state, in this horrible, wretched state, please let me improve myself hmm. before I will come come into your presence. But what's the thing is, you have to come into His presence when He calls, even in your terrible, wretched state, hmm. and it will create shame. You will feel in, in in the presence of His beauty and His majesty how ugly and how wretched you know your state is. Hmm. But that is good. If you will not despair, you will say, well, yes, look, look you know, and, and then you can truly throw yourself upon the mercy of the king, mm. you know, and then say, you know, I, I, I cannot, you know, make myself worthy of you, but you can make me worthy of you, mm. you know, and, and, and just pray that, you know, because you, we have to do that. We can't. You know, and and at the same time, you know, if you're not if you're not serious about trying to clean up your act and trying to overcome your 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 negative habits and and, and trying to put your life in order, then you know you, you have no sincerity. And if you have no, no sincerity, how how can you pray, you know, for help from help for help from Allah? You can't do it. So you've got to try. I mean, what R Rumi somewhere ha has a wonderful one. Actually, if I can find this, see if I can get. Give me a second. Go back in here. Where was that? Yeah, Romy in Fi'i Mafihi. Allah, stop it, Allah. Yeah. Um, I think it was here. Let's see. If, if I don't find it right away, I will. Okay. Yeah, this, this, yeah, R Rumi says it like this. He says, man imagines that he can rid himself of his base characteristic, characteristics by means of his own actions and endeavor. When he strives and expends much energy only to be, to be disappointed, God says to him, you thought it would come about through your own energy and action and deeds. That is indeed a custom I have established, a sunnah, right? That is, that what you have, you should expend on our behalf. Only then does our mercy come. We say to you, travel this endless road on your own weak legs. We know that with your weak legs, you will never be able to finish the way. In a hundred thousand years, you would not finish even one stage of the way. Only when you make the effort and come onto the road and fall down at last, unable to go another step, only then will you be uplifted by God's favor. When you have the strength and could expend your energy from time to time, in a state between sleep and wakefulness, we bestowed upon you the grace to gain strength in your quest and to encourage you. Now that you no longer have the means to continue, look upon our grace and favor and see how they swarm down upon you. For a hundred thousand endeavors, you would not have seen so much as an iota of this. So that's, I think that's perfectly said. So, you know, and, and what you, I mean, we, we, the Christians say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That doesn't mean you, you, you don't strive to be worthy of the glory of God and to meet it. But how could you, how could you ever really reach that? You have to, you have to try with the greatest sincerity, but when you fail, 
either you despair or that's the greatest good fortune because that's when God, when Allah can uplift you. You know, I mean, that, and that's, and look, that was quite a while ago he was saying. That. We're talking about, you know, kids in the modern world who have problems, you know, modern problems, but that's always been the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, so if I can go back to the issue of love uh, versus practice, what what do you see in the modern times is the balance since uh, let me just add this since in the modern times we've also lost kind of like a meaningfulness oh. well i mean when everything is meaningless what are you going to do how are you going to you know one one has to have the beginning of a sense of the reality of Allah and that Allah is the treasury of all meaning. All meaning, you know, not, not just in the celestial world or, or in his own essence, but the meaning of all the things of life are in the treasury of Allah. Mm -hmm. And you have to you have to have enough faith from somewhere. And where does faith come from? That's the question. You know? But you have to have enough faith to just say, I know it's somewhere. I know Allah is real and within Allah somewhere the meanings are. Even though I don't know what they are and everything looks meaningless to me, somewhere there are the meanings. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, then you, you can, you pray to Allah, just, you know, sh show me, show me the meaning of this. He won't necessarily show you right away. But if, if, if you, if you pray sincerely, in that very prayer for what is the meaning of this that's happened to me and what is the meaning of this i'm struggling with even in just praying that the, the meaning is beginning to to to, to appear just you know. and you know uh one of the good things that traditionalists uh, perennialists say is that there are three kinds of prayer there's the canonical prayer which in islam is a salat there's invocatory prayer, which in Sufism is a zikr, zikrullah. And there is a personal prayer, where you just, you know, here I am, you know, in, 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 my, in my simple humanity, in my fitra, I'm, I'm you know, and, and the, the, you say to Allah that, that there's, only, there's only me and you in all of existence. There's only me and you, and, and really, maybe there's only you in all of existence, and yet I appear, and, and I feel I have needs, and, and so I turn to you. And, and you know, you can have, you can have a heart-to-heart -heart with Allah. You can have a munajat, yeah. you know, munajat with him. And those are the three, and, and, and they all sort of support each other, mm. you know, um, uh, if, if, and, and, and if, if, if you fall down in one of those areas, you know, you could pick up some of the other areas and, and then and then the area you, you've fallen down in will, will come back and will be strengthened. So I think it's important, in, you know, to have a prayer life. And, you know, if you say, oh, you know, I, I do this a lot if I try and I try and nothing happens and why do I am I doing this? And, 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 or, you know, I keep forgetting to remember, <laughs> you know, I keep forgetting, you know, to, to, to be constant in the invocation, you know, when will I remember? And then the point it comes to sit and you say, Allah, here I am, whatever my shortcomings. You know, I'm trying to do my best, but you know, it's like Hafiz has um has a line in one of his kazals, which is uh I'm surprised you studied Hafiz, okay? And that's like really getting deep. Well, I, I don't know. What 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 I did, I I a, a friend of mine. <laughs> when a huge library died and we spent you know people from his church and me and some other people spent a huge time getting these books out of his apartment and then when it was a, it, he had been ill for a long time the apartment was a mess rats were eating some of the books but there were spiritual classics of every religion under the sun because hmm. he used to work at shambhala books in berkeley which, which is was the spirit, big spiritual bookstore on Telegraph Avenue, and so you have this amazing collection. So we spent 
months, you know, putting them in boxes and get, we, we gave all the Catholic books to the Catholics and, and the Orthodox books to the Orthodox. And, and I took a bunch of the Muslim and Sufi books and gave them to, to my the Matlahi Sufis and we gave some to the Jews and we gave, you know, it was just insane. So, I, so and I skimmed off all the cream that I wanted. And one was was this big translation of the Divan of Hafiz um, by H. Wilberforce Clark. I hope it was it was a good literal translation. It was a terrible poetic translation, but I just hope. So I so I said to myself, which is what we poets were doing at that point, which is not entirely kosher, but I'm going to rewrite these in more poetic forms. Mm. And that's what that's what Robert Bly did, and what Coleman Barks did with Rumi. Uh, I don't know how how accurate his translations are. Some of them are very beautiful, some of them are not. But so I, well, I'm going to do this with a few. So I did a few, you know. And uh, so one, one place he says, you know, you know, the, the 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 we are are far from the station of union. Our desire is not far. So mm. he said, you know, you 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 look at this the state. And, you know, and, and I, I'm convinced that, that that Hafiz actually was a kind of a, a wastrel, you know, um, you know, maybe when he talked about wine, it wasn't always just the spiritual wine. Who knows? You know, it, it sounds like he's saying, you know, uh, you know, I haven't met the mark. I'm, 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 a, I'm a poor, you know, poor beat poet, if, if you will. But yet, you know, my, my desire for Allah is, is here. And so, so he's, you know, so the thing is, you, you see all the vast distance between your state and, 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 and the state you would wish, you know, to be in before, you know, you appear in the court of a king. And yet, mysteriously, your desire for Allah is already there. Mm. If you want, if you want the spiritual life, if you want perfection, if you want to grow in the spiritual life and come near to Allah, some part of you is already there. You couldn't even want it if it wasn't already accomplished in some other world. That doesn't mean all this other stuff has, doesn't have to be dealt with because you better deal with it. But somewhere you're already there. If you weren't already there, you couldn't even begin. Mm -hmm. You know, you're already there in, in, in Allah's knowledge of you. And sometimes you see that, you know. And so part of what you're saying also is that, which which is the opposite of materialism, right? Which is that your brokenness, your your self's brokenness is, in a sense, the beginning of actualization. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it makes it harder and harder for the nafs to make an idol out of itself. Now, now it's also an, an evil in itself. You don't want to be broken. You 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 want to be whole. That's the whole idea. Allah right. made you to be Yes, yes. You know, you 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 have and 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 what you're praying to him for is your own wholeness as 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 well as his presence, which are really the same thing, ultimately. Mm. Uh and, and yet, you know, the the, the very fact that, that you, you've fallen so far short of that and you are so broken, that can be turned to the good too. Because it prevents the nafs from making making an idol out of itself. So. That uh, reminds me of another poem. Uh, I don't know which uh, scholar wrote it, but I think it was some of the traditional scholars, which says, "Fasnul ko agar taklif hamse," that if time and space has a problem with me meaning in terms of being near to Allah and near to the Prophet. So he's like, the time and space is a creation of Allah. So he's saying, he's complaining to that creation, which is time and space, that if you have a problem with me <laughs> getting close to Allah, because of my own weaknesses, ultimately. But then he also kind of like acknowledges, you know, okay, I understand you have a problem with me because of my problems. But there are also people behind me who may be even yearning more than me compared to the distance I have, meaning my proximity, proximity uh, though limited, but there are people who yearn more than me that are even behind me. Yeah. And, and, and so 
you know, the, 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 there things are everything is ranged in ranks, certainly. You know, and and there are higher and lower states and stations, and yet there's a mysterious way that that the lowest can also suddenly be the highest. I mean, be, because otherwise Allah's presence would be limited by the hierarchy of His creation, and it is not mm. limited by that. Mm. It's everywhere, and 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 it can break through any veil at any time. Okay, inshallah, we will continue and. Um... We have, inshallah, for our viewers, some uh, good news, inshallah, coming soon. So um, definitely uh, look up uh, uh, Brother Charles Upton's uh, books, uh, especially the book on Dijal, and definitely buy that and share that, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Yeah, and also, I, 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 you know, for some reason, feeling very strange about it, but not being able to stop myself, I wrote a book on Sufism called Day and Night on the Sufi Path. Day and and it has a lot about the psychology of the nafs and things like this. And then it has a section about different spiritual stage, which I pretty much took uh, with my own, you know, version from uh, Dr. Nurbaksh, Nurbaksh's uh, books, where he talks about the various ahwal and the various makamat, the spiritual states and, and the spiritual levels that are reached in all of this. So... So I did my own thing on that as well. Okay, inshallah. Let's uh, continue next week. Uh, we, I will, okay, inshallah. Bismillah, inshallah. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam.